Hey everybody, Michael Crump here again, and today I want to take a look at hacking a Nintendo Switch. So before we begin, there is a couple of things that you're going to want to get before you start this process. One of them is you're going to need a SD card. This one is running right around 128 gigabytes. And also with this one, um, I think I paid right around $33, $34 for this as the time of this recording. So yeah, you want to get something that's pretty sizable because a lot of the games and the other stuff that you're going to be putting on this, they're, they're going to average around 14 gigabytes or better. So if you get 128, that's going to allow you to at least uh, store quite a bit of information. You're going to need to get this thing is called an RCM tool. Now I'll open this up and the reason I wanted to show you that you're going to need this is that this provides the short that's going to be needed in order to hack the Nintendo Switch. So as you see there, it's got these two little pins up at the top. Um, that is it. That's a complete, just a piece of plastic with a couple of pins that will help short things out. And these you can find pretty much anywhere. Um, I found these, I bought this one on Amazon for myself, and I paid a total of, I think, $6 for this. Um, so you are going to need that. Obviously, the other thing that you're going to need, you're going to need to get a switch and a compatible model of the switch. So this is something that I'm going to go over in details in just a moment. Okay, so back over on your switch, we're going to go ahead and we're going to select system settings. Once you are in system settings, scroll on down to the bottom, go to system, and then you're going to want to look for serial information. Okay, this is important, folks. Pay very close attention to the serial number that is located here. So you may want to write this down. What you're going to be paying special attention to is going to be the first three letters and then the number following it for a website that we're about to go to where we can go in and we can validate and verify that this switch is patchable. So I'm on a site now. It's called ismyswitchpatch.com. And from there, you can see there is this prefix. The prefix is that three letter plus one number beginning part of the serial number. So I'm going to go ahead and select mine, which is the very first one. And so now we've got to do a serial number. Now, you may be thinking maybe start after the zero zeros or something like that. But actually, you need to put in those zero zeros. So the next six characters is the characters that you're going to want to put into this. Now you'll see I've got mine in and it does say then in green that your console is not patched. Hooray! So this means your switch is going to be either patched or not patched. So keep in mind and pay special attention to this screen when you're going to check to see if your switch is patched or not. I went ahead and I downloaded this tool. It's called Mini Tool Partition Wizard. You can do a quick search on Google and you will find this tool. Just download it and resume the video then. Once you've already downloaded this tool, what we're going to use here is we're going to use the capability to format our SD card in FAT32. So here is my USB card. There's nothing on it at the moment and it's currently using XFAT. We're going to go ahead and we're going to go down to disk 2, which is my SD card. We're going to right click format and we're going to just change this and for the cluster size, leave it as default. Okay, so now once that's done, we're going to need to click the apply button and then for apply the changes, we're going to go ahead and we're going to hit yes here. And it takes just a few minutes or so. I think I sped up the video here. Uh, but once it's complete, you should see all of the changes have been applied successfully. Okay, we can go back to our SD card and we can go back and verify with the properties. 
and it does say right here that the file system was FAT32. Now you're going to need to go to a couple of different websites. The first one that we're going to here is called sdsetup.com. Go ahead and click on the Nintendo Switch and then go to the recommended defaults and scroll on down and you should see it says download your zip. So we're going to download the zip file there. And now we need to go to another site. This one is going to be listed in the description below, but this is going to be Tegra. So this is the Tegra RCM uh, GUI, which we're going to need every time we either reboot the device or we unload our custom firmware. Scrolling down, you'll see there is the installer MSI. And I'm just going to click on that and that will give us a graphical user interface that we're going to need. Next up is Atmosphere. So Atmosphere, we're going to take the very first zip file here. And now we're going to need Hakate. So for Hakate, go to the site listed again in the description and scroll on down. And you're going to take this very top one here where it says Hakate. 5.63. It may be on a later version. Okay, so I pulled down all of the zip files and everything we just downloaded, put it in a separate directory here on my local hard disk, and on my SD card, there is absolutely nothing on it right now. So let's go ahead and start getting our SD card prepared. In Atmosphere, we're just going to double click on the zip file there. We're going to select all of the files and we're just gonna copy them to our SD card drive. Let's go over ahead and go to Hakate. We're going to grab the bootloader and we're gonna drop it again in the root of our SD card. And then for the bin file, we'll put it on our desktop. This is a file that we're going to need many times over. And so put it somewhere where you can find it. Then we'll take the SD card zip file. We're gonna select all the folders in that. And again, we're just gonna drop that right onto the root of our SD card. And the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna install the GUI for Tegra RCM. So again, it's just a next, next, finish. And right here is where I'll go ahead and add in a check mark for the launch Tegra button. Okay. So this is the tool that you're going to get very familiar with. This is going to inject a payload into your Nintendo Switch, which is going to allow you to run this homebrew code. So you will be using this many times. So the very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to select the folder icon and we're going to our desktop. Remember that file? Yes, that Hakate file. We're going to select it and you can see it's now listed as the payload under settings you need to click install driver so once you click install driver it'll say that it's missing and then finally on the device wizard it will finish i would go ahead and add a check mark here where it says run apps at windows startup the other one that I would use is would be the auto inject. I did not select auto inject during this video, but by doing so, it will make your life a lot easier. All right, and we've got one more thing to do before we remove the SD card from our computer. Copy all of the files and folders in the SD folder. And then I want you to navigate back to the root of the USB drive. And then from here, I'd like for you to paste all of those in. And do override any of the files that may conflict. Okay, so we did the hard part. You should have your switch. You should have the SD card, your computer, as well as your USB-A to USB-C cable. Now, if your computer already has USB-C, 
then you can obviously go USB-C to USB-C, which is what the Switch uses. And that may be a little bit easier if your PC has one. Mine does not, and I assume a lot of other people don't have that as well. And once you have all of your files copied over, now pull out your SD card, and you'll want to go ahead and put this inside of the Wii. Power down your Switch. And when I say power down, don't put it in any sort of rest mode or sleep mode. Do the shutdown option. Okay, so up at the very top of your switch, you're going to see there's a volume button that's a plus or a minus. Press and keep the plus button held down and press the power button on your switch. And then release them. And if everything is going as planned, then what you'll see back in the tool, it should say RCM device detected. And now you would be able to click on inject payload. And if you end with this screen, you're in great luck because it has uploaded the payload and it does say that it is now successfully injected. So now you're going to be able to do all of the cool things like homebrew, etc. Okay, and now on your Nintendo Switch, you should see this menu. So go ahead and click on the launch button and you should see a couple of different options here for custom firmware. And so I want you just to select CFW and then Sys MMC. Okay, you should see Hikate, custom NX bootloader. There's the logo. We've got our Nintendo Switch, and now we're going to click on Home. We're going to click on the album. And if we click on the album here, you can already see there is a ton of new options for us. So congratulations, you have enabled Homebrew on your Nintendo Switch. Uh, you can see there is a couple of games and tools. That, there's Breeze, there's a Cannonball game. Uh, you'll also note that there is an HB app store. So again, the homebrew app store is what you may be interested in the most. And while all of these applications are great, you're probably going to be interested in learning a lot more about Tenfold. If you go to tenfold.io slash download, then you'll be presented with this site. So this is a switch title manager. And without going too deep into the details, you can read this for yourself and learn some of the capabilities that it gives you. What we want to do is we want to download Tenfold 13.0 NSP now. Navigate to where that file is and then take a copy and then back on your USB drive, go ahead and paste. Now you'll need to navigate over to iTotal Justice. Again, the link's in the description. And you will then click on download the latest release. And we're going to select the one right here that says Hakate. We'll go ahead and we will open that up. As we are going to copy and paste those two folders again directly into the root of our SD card. Now navigate to the root of your SD card and click on bootloader. And we're going to want to open hikate.ipl.ini. So go ahead and open that file up. Okay, and now that this file is loaded up, so this is your initialization file when Hikate runs. We're going to go ahead and we're going to look at line number 13 here, and we're going to add in this text, kip one patch equals no sig check. We're also going to go ahead and we're going to look at line 19 and we're going to put that same exact text that we were using before in there. Once that's done, you're going to want to file and you're going to go save. And now that all of that's set, you should be able to go ahead and eject your USB drive and put that back into your Nintendo Switch. 
So we're gonna use the exact same steps as we did before, where we use our RCM tool, as well as launch into Hikate. So go ahead and click the launch button here. We're gonna select that same CFW. Go to the albums. And if you scroll over, you should see Tenfold. And go ahead and click on it and let it install and you will now see this on your Nintendo Switch menu. Okay, so this was a very fun project. I hope everyone had fun watching this today. If you can, as always, please give me a like. Maybe drop in a couple of comments. That would be awesome. As well as hit the subscribe button to learn more about different console hacks. Until next time, Michael signing off.